My name is Stephen Pettigrew. I'm a PhD student at Harvard University, and I was a co-author on a technical comment in the journal of, called Science, and the paper was called Estimating the Reproducibility of Psychological Science. Yeah, so there was a team of uh, several hundred psychologists who uh, went out and they identified a whole bunch of psychological experiments um, in behavioral psychology and a, a few other psychological subfields. And what they did was uh, they took these results and they replicated the studies, so they reran the experiments. And the main finding that they had, uh, they argued that they found um, very low percentage of these uh, psychology experiments successfully replicated the effects. So they took the first result in each of these hundred papers and um, and attempted to, in a, in a totally new experiment, and tried to recover that same effect. Um, and, and they argued in the original paper that they uh, were successful. There was a few different metrics that they used, but they were only successful in roughly a third of uh, these hundred studies. Yeah, so this project, um, uh, because the project is is on the topic of replicability and reproducibility, uh, the, that that team of several hundred psychologists they they worked really hard to make their data available. And from from our perspective, trying to evaluate the claims of their paper, it was completely essential that they had made their data available publicly for us to dig into. Um, and it, it was it was great on their part that um, not just the the data that. They, they they made available all the data that they collected through their entire uh, through the entire process, including stuff that didn't end up even making it into the paper, but that um, was just some ancillary stuff that that they collected. And and uh, as we started to analyze that data, that's when we started to find some of the conclusions that um, arose in our in our response to their paper. So a couple of my co-authors on this project are psychologists themselves, and uh, and they uh, when when this this paper came out in Science, it, it drew a lot of media attention, um, and a lot of people, a lot of uh, the media was casting doubt on on sort of the whole enterprise of psychology experiments um, as a result of the conclusions of this paper. And so um, uh, the psychologists that I'm working with, uh, they uh, they they felt it was very important to make sure that given the, the broad conclusions that people were drawing from this paper, that the conclusions of the paper did in fact stand up to scrutiny. And so that's kind of where the paper started, uh, was, was just, uh, just checking the assumptions behind, um, behind the various uh, aspects of the analysis that this project uh, incorporated. And so that's where, that's where we started. So the main takeaway of our paper, um, what, what we found very quickly was that a lot of these hundred experiments that had been uh, replicated, uh, the way that they did the replications were there, were, there were major differences from the original studies that they were trying to verify the results of. And so, um, so, so we go into a bunch of examples of this in the paper, uh, but, but some of them, um, for example, there was a study on how students perceive uh, race in admissions decisions in, um, in in universities. And the original study that they were attempting to replicate was run, uh, I think, at a school in California. Uh, the replication team, when they ran the replication, they replicated this result with students from the Netherlands. And so we found we found that there were lots of instances where uh, the replication studies were uh, they were different in very significant and important ways that would would just on face would seem that it would make it less likely that they would succeed in replicating the original result, even if the original result were true. Um, and so we, uh, and, and in fact, I mentioned earlier that uh, that the that the they made available lots of data that um, wasn't wasn't necessarily an part of the analyses in their paper. And one of the things that they included in in the in this data set was. Um, 
uh, they asked the they reached out to the original authors of all of these studies and asked whether or not the original authors endorsed the replication protocols. So they were they provided sort of the explanation of how they were going to replicate these experiments, um, and then the the replicators were given an opportunity to um, indicate whether they felt that the the replication was a faithful one. And, and what we found was that among the ones that were in fact uh, endorsed, those replicated um, pretty well at, at a very high rate, but but that basically all of the failures had not been endorsed by the original authors. And so um, we took this as maybe an indication that at least some of these replication studies were not faithful to the original studies in a way, in, a, in an important way. And so that was, um, that was sort of the major finding that we had. So in the original study, their conclusions, uh, essentially they drew a conclusion that um, that out of using this, hunt, this sample of 100 psychological studies, they drew broader conclusions about the level of replicability in psychology as a whole. And, and one of the things that we pointed out in their paper is that in order to make that type of conclusion, you need to be taking a random sample of psychology studies. And what we pointed out is that their sample was very much not random. Um, so in fact, they, they only drew, they specifically only drew articles from a couple different subfields of psychology, and so they, they could, could say nothing about some, some areas of psychology. Um, in addition, the, the mechanism by which uh, the team, so they worked in, there were a hundred different teams, each running a different experiment, and the teams themselves were just, they were given, there was a list of about 150 potential um, experiments that they could replicate, and the teams were allowed to select which one they wanted to pick. And so, um, so the hundred that ended up getting picked were not selected in any kind of a random random method. The, the list of, a, of 150, the full list, was um, not randomly generated. And so, so one of the things that we pointed out in our, in, in our comment, in our response, was that um, in order to draw conclusions more broadly, you need a, a random sample, and that um, at best, even if all of the even if all of their replication exercises had been faithful to the original study, it doesn't tell us too much more about the field of psychology beyond just the sample of the hundred studies they happen to pick. It doesn't tell us we can't extrapolate from those results um, in the way that they did. So the original, after our, simultaneously with our article coming out, the original authors were able to basically write a response to our response. Um, and they, there was a bunch of uh, technical points that they disagreed with us on. Um, and, and, uh, and then, you know, we ended up after, after that came out, we actually wrote a response to their response, but to their, to the response or, you know, whatever it is. But, um, you know, I, I think though, I, the one thing I think that all of us, you know, me and my co-authors as well as the people on the other side that, um, um, we all agree with is that um, it's really important to have sort of this iteration back and forth um, between uh, different, you know, people who who come to different conclusions by looking at at the same at the same data. Um, and that's just sort of how science works. And so, um, so it, it would actually, I, you know, I think it was a really positive experience for um, for the for psychology and just social science as a whole for this discussion to go on. Um, it allows for. You know the the all the perspectives to be put out there and everybody to lay out their evidence um, in a very clear way, um, and then you know going forward it allows uh, future researchers researchers to sort of build on one of those two sides or just evaluate for themselves um, uh, you know what they believe in terms of where the evidence is strongest, which side has the stronger evidence. So that was a really great I think that, I think this project in particular did a very nice job of highlighting um, that aspect of science, just sort of the um, the everybody working toward the same goal of um, figuring out the truth um, and and you know making a case in the best way that they can yeah so I think going forward uh, one of the things that I've I've I've, I've appreciated even more is just the value of making data available and and um, and and how important it is that for for any research topic uh, you're going to get people who maybe disagree with your conclusions and maybe even write a, a response that gets put into a journal that that is critical of what you claim but um, for me going forward I think the important thing is just to remember that um, is, is to, to go into the you know think about those experiences that everybody's coming at it in good faith um, and that everybody's working toward the same goal of you know getting to the bottom of an interesting social question um, and and 
and you know it just it just reminds me of the importance of that aspect of science of just um, everybody uh, presenting the best evidence that they can and uh, allowing the allowing there to be this back and forth conversation that goes on in the literature um, and, and you know that's really the way that we we come to realize that we've actually learned something.